So I'm going to make some lovely beef burgers for you today. So I've got some lovely Irish beef, and again, board be a quality assured uh, beef. We were talking about all of the Irish producers and wonderful food producers doing great work uh, around the world of food. So we'll support them as as best as we can. Um, so. Burgers are kind of quite simple uh, to make. I have a couple of killer uh, ingredients that kind of make them a little bit different than the norm because sometimes, and I know this sounds funny, but you know the way sometimes you can kind of get burgers and they're very meaty, okay, that all you're getting is the meat. So I'm going to add a few bits to them to add a bit of lightness. So what I've got here is I've got um, some lovely uh, minced beef. Okay, I'm going to put the minced beef in there and to that I'm just going to season that with a little bit of salt and pepper. And always when I get people at cookery demonstrations events, I always tell them to season everything incrementally, so bit by bit, and just have the seasoning done at the early stage, that you're not kind of doing it all at the dining stage, so that you're allowing those flavours to develop and to actually infuse through. So the same if you're cooking anything, like whether it's a curry or a bolognese or um, a fish uh, chowder or something, you know, just keep tasting it, keep seasoning it throughout to kind of get it to be at the, at the right stage. Now, to that, I'm going to add some ingredients into it. This will be very simple. Uh, for you to remember so I'm going to add in three binding ingredients okay and then I'm going to add in three flavorings so the three binding ingredients that I've got I've got some fresh white breadcrumbs now what they do is they will soak up any of the kind of the residual fat so as any of the fat goes to escape from this it will be soaked up or dried up and retained in the product and again where we've got the retention of fat you get the retention of flavor as well so that will kind of keep that flavor uh, nicely throughout that's breadcrumbs again you'd often see people maybe using cream crackers or they might use some corn flakes or um, a little bit of couscous or something in there or even a digestive biscuit uh, would be ideal in there as well. That's the first binding ingredient. The second binding ingredient I've got some cheese so I'm just using a little bit of grated parmesan there so put in some of that in there as well and again that will melt into it and help to stick or adhere it all together and the third and final binding ingredient I'm putting in there is I'm putting in a lovely egg in there as well. So one egg going in there and that'll just help to bring all of that together. Now, moving onwards then from that, the next thing I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in three actual flavourings. So what I've got is I've got some onion. Now what I'm actually using today is I'm using some of the scallions or some of the spring onions. Now they're great, uh, again, that you don't have to saute them. So if I was using a normal red or a white onion, I'd just saute it gently and let it cool down very gently, first and foremostly. So in there we're going to put a lovely scallion. Now, of course, when you're at home doing all of these things, you'll have everything weighed out and ready just like me, won't you? You'll have it all in the bowl now, folks, won't you? Don't be taking me for a walk. Now, in there, I'm going to put a little bit of parsley. So I've got some lovely, freshly chopped parsley, or you could use coriander or thyme or rosemary or whatever herbs uh, that you've got. So pop that in there as well. And like, I mean, again, you can um, grow the herbs in just a pot at the back door. I have a pot at home, a lady from, from Tullow uh, gave me a pot of herbs a couple of years ago that her husband had been uh, doing up for me and like there's chives and there's rosemary and there's sage and it gets buckets of hardship and plenty of abuse and it comes back year on year, do you know that sort of way? So just keep them out uh, in a big bucket. Now the secret ingredient that I tend to use now is I use a little bit of sweet chilli sauce or sweet chilli jam, okay? Or any other type of chutney. So we've all got fridges at home or I know I have a fridge that there's a a bit of this and a bit of that and your granny or your auntie kitty give you a hamper for Christmas and there's three different types of chutney into it. Any of those will add a nice bit of flavour. So whether it's a tomato chutney, whether it's a kind of an autumn fruit, even an apple, a plum, anything will just add a nice bit of flavour. I'm using a little bit of sweet chilli sauce there or sweet chilli jam and pop that in and that adds both a nice bit of flavour and adds a nice sense of moisture to that as well. So it'll work really nicely for you. Then you can see I've popped on the gloves and and it's a kind of a hands-on job, okay? You so give that a good mix-up just like that. Now that mixture then can be used for lovely meatballs or you could press that into a two pound loaf tin and turn it into like a terrine. Do you know that sort of way, like a meatloaf? And that can be served either hot or cold. So that'll be gorgeous there as well. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that meat, okay? And I'm just going to mold that up into little patties, okay? And just hold that nicely into a nice shape and do the same again. And
And again, they are ideal for putting into the freezer. So if I was at home now, I might just wrap up some of those in cling film and stick them into the freezer. Not tin foil, because it's hard to get the tin foil off when they're defrosted. But so those are our beef burgers. We have our barbecue nicely heated. And that's key to kind of make sure that it is nicely heated. Sometimes if you want it and if you were kind of concerned about your own barbecue or even concerned about the type of meat that you were using, you might decide to just brush the top of those with a little bit of oil, you know, just so that you have it. I'm actually happy that there's a kind of sufficient fat in there to actually render them down. Okay, so that could end up in the pool. I'm sure they'll be fired then. Now, pop those on there just like so. And they're nicely heated. Just like so. Okay, and we're going to allow those to cook. So we're going to just leave that for a minute or two. And again, a little tip that I have here, I've got some lovely fresh lettuce leaves today and likewise I had done it with my parsley or some herbs as well, if you want to extend their shelf life. Um, I just have them in a bowl and I've just got some damp tissue on top of them and that just keeps them really nice and fresh for you, okay? So a little bit of damp tissue on the top. Now again, because we're on the maiden voyage, I'm going to go in here and you can see that we're coming along uh, really nicely. Or you will see, we're going on the World Wide Web, folks. I'm going to be big in Utah or Texas or somewhere after this, I'd say. Uh, so that's based that. They're coming along nicely. I'm happy enough to leave them for another little minute or two. And then also what I've got that I'm going to put on there, I've got some rashers of bacon. So I'm using some of the O'Neill's uh, rashers of bacon from, uh, from Wexford. So I'm going to put those uh, on in there as well. And I'm going to get those nice and crisp to go with the burgers. And then I brought some of the Blas from Waterford. So I'm kind of really keeping the whole southeast going uh, with today's demonstration. So I'm going to just put on some of those burgers as well and put on some of the lovely rashers. Now, and also what I've said to you there on the recipe, I know you're going to get the recipe, but I've said to you that I've got the little, uh, you know, the little small frying pans, little dinky frying pans just for uh, an egg. If you wanted to turn this like into a brunch beef burger, if you were having like a luncheon or something, and you could maybe take that burger and um, get a little frying pan and fry an egg on the top of the barbecue as well and then build it up so you've got the bacon, you've got the lettuce. I've got a little bit of sweet chilli sauce or some sweet chilli mayonnaise here. So what I've done is I've literally just taken uh, a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of that sweet chilli sauce that we're using there as well. Now let's get in here and have a little look and I think we can turn our burgers over, yeah. And we're just getting nicely charred up there. Okay, and we let those just continue uh, to cook down and the bacon is coming along nicely as well so I know you're probably a bit far away for the smell but a gorgeous smell coming up from uh, from there as well you've got the smell of vision Katrina is getting it here as well now and we just have a little look at our rashers there as well and they're coming along really lovely that's a thingy little tray now a really thingy little tray okay and that's based that. We've just got a small little tray here. As I said, I've got some of the lovely blas. We might just pop those on and let those toast up a little bit uh, as well. And again, um, they're just really nice. I love that kind of floured bapper. Sometimes if I was going for the healthier option, I might tuck them into like a pita bread or even like fold. Sometimes I would do these as meatballs and fold the, um, the tortilla wrap in two and kind of like make a little meatball sandwich with the tortilla wrap because I suppose sometimes people are kind of trying to steer clear of big bits of bread or something like that because the barbecue and the beach pod don't always go hand in hand. Now so I'll pop those up there and I think our burgers are coming along nicely. And give those another little turn there Katrina, what do you reckon? Yeah, they're coming along really lovely. Yeah, so we're happy enough with those as well. And uh, the rashers are delish. So we can probably just give those one last little turn. So we're very nearly at hand, folks. So if you're with us from the outset now, it's not worth going at this stage. You're, uh, you're nearly there at this stage. So um, you, can, you can check that out. Now, so we're coming along really nicely. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find the bottom of those. I'm going to get a little bit of sweet chili mayonnaise. And again, just to remind you that there is lots of demonstrations happening in this garden and other places right throughout the day. So uh, find, uh, find your way around. So put some of the lovely lettuce leaves. So I've got a little bit of rocket. I've got a little bit of chard uh, there as well, or some herbs. 
and you can put whatever you like. I mean, I always think burgers are quite fun, and if I was having like a little party, an informal party at home, it can sometimes be nice to do like a build your own function, whereby you could have some sliced tomatoes, you could have some gherkins, you could have lots of bits and pieces that people like. So um, pop those on the top. I'm going to go in here for our burgers, and I think we're, we're good to go. Now, when you know that those are cooked, they'll be just nice and firm to the church. We'll just give a little look in, yeah? Okay, and I'm just going to build those up. So pop them on just like so. And we'll just do up the two of these, and then the rest of them we'll just cut up in just a second. And give you a little taste. Now, we've got our uh, lovely rashers of bacon here as well. Nice and crisp. Okay. Put another little bit of the sauce on here as well. And there we have it, just like so. And uh, we'll just tidy off our little plate. And you can see that those are our lovely uh, beef burgers, just like so. Okay, so have a little look at those. All right. Now, lads, we just go louder. I'm after coming up from the country. 